going on, everybody? Welcome to another FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff. And if you have cereal or oatmeal or a cup of coffee, then prep it and get it ready now because we are gonna answer some questions and get some knowledge all up in that brain. First question. Hey, Fluff, I'm trying to choose between a decent Floyd Rose or a Kayla Bridge. Any advice? If you are a whammy guy, you normally have two choices if you're doing some heavy heavy dime bo dive bomb stuff and things like that. It's the Kaler or the Floyd Rose. And in my opinion, the Floyd Rose beats out all of them still. It's a classic. Um, many, many, many years ago, I had a, it was an Ibanez RG of some kind. It was in the late 90s. And it had a Floyd Rose on it and it was cool and it was fun. I just never used it and I, it's just not part of my style. So I never used it. So I really didn't care for it much, but it did work and it returned to tune when you, when you got done using it. The Kaler, on the other hand, I have a Kaler on my GNL Rampage Jerry Cantrell signature model, and I know it's not the US version, and I know it's not the best kind of Kaler. I know there's a one up from the one that comes in that guitar. However, I have tried several Kalers. I've tried uh, USA Custom ones. I've tried, or excuse me, the bridges that come on the USA Custom. Uh, guitars, uh, GNL. I played some vintage 80s uh, guitars with uh, original Kalers. And the thing I always come away with from the Kalers is how did this ever go into production and how did someone go, this actually works, we should, we should market this because I have yet to find a Kaler that works at all in any way, shape or form. They ne never, ever, ever return to pitch because the strings are dragging on the screw heads for one and B it's a single spring. I think it's like one or two maybe springs depending on the model, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's on a fulcrum and it's a cam and I get it's, it's a good, it's a good theory, but it doesn't work. It, it's just horrible. It's a horrible, horrible bridge. Um, this shouldn't even be allowed on guitars. I'm totally serious. I hate them. And, um, I do love the one on my GNL though, because I did lock it. And once you lock it, it's a great bridge. It's rock solid. So definitely, definitely go with the Floyd Rose. Hey Ryan, I was wondering where you got your Maze modded and what you got it modded to do. Thanks. My two channel dual rectifier is a 95 model that I got from Will, Will Ray from Third Age Amplifiers. And he did a mod of his called the Thunk Mod. And what the Thunk Mod is, is uh, it's various things. He added a bias control to the power section. He changed the loop from uh, parallel to series. He added some uh, bright cap switches, which is the two little switches on the front. And he also tightened up the uh, low end significantly, uh, which really sounds kind of like more gain because there's more high end presence. It's not a whole lot more gain than a stock two channel because I can still get great cleans out of it and stuff like that. But the bottom end is very, very big but very, very tight. It's uh, it's almost like the bottom end of a 5150 almost, um, but there's much more mid-range and uh, upper end presence to it, which I like a lot because I still prefer the 6L6s in the dual rectifiers and I still prefer to use the recto tubes. I don't really like the solid state uh, diodes. I, I like the tubes and uh, which gives it a little softer tack so that really kind of compensates for it and it is just wonderful. And if you want a mod of your own to your own two channel rectifier, feel free to hit up Will at 30 age amps and I will link to his Facebook down below in the description. I just bought a used tube amp. It's my first tube amp. It sounds good. Not sure when I should change the tubes though. Should I do it now or should I wait till it's time? And how do I know it's time? Sorry for all the questions. You should do a thing where we pay you like a dollar to answer questions. If I got a dollar for every time I answered a question, I would probably answer a lot more questions. <laughs> no, seriously, my PayPal is down in the description. No, but seriously, if if I get a used tube amp, then uh, I change out the tubes. That's pre a pretty hard and fast rule for me personally. And the main reason is I don't know how long the tubes have been in there. And I wanna know how long they have been in there and what tubes they are and what kind of condition they're at. And especially with the power tubes, um, I really want to know what's going on with those. So I will usually retube a, uh, a used amp that I get fully 
And if cash is an issue or anything like that, at a minimum, change out the power tubes as soon as you get the used amp. This will create two things. One, you'll know uh, exactly what's in there, like I said, and B, you will have a spare set, uh, a known good set that works in the amp. You'll have a spare set in case the other set goes down for any reasons. And you always keep the used tubes for spares. You always want spares with tubes and that's never a bad thing to have extra tubes. Um, as far as knowing when to replace them, typically uh, these days with new production tubes, you will not notice a tonal difference um, before you notice mechanical differences like uh, ringing, um, things going microphonic, whistling, um, a vibration kind of a sound uh, in the power tubes, um, things like that. Um, if you do uh, get the power tubes to last a really long time, normally you will start to notice a loss of low end in my experience. The low end will kind of start to go and things will get kind of mushy in the power section. Um, it depends on your amp's design, of course, but generally speaking, if you're playing on a regular basis, you should be changing your tubes about once a year, annually. Hi, Fluff. Would you ever consider picking up a Gibson Marauder L6 or Sonics if you were given the chance? They look and sound so awesome to me. The answer to your question, sir, is yes. I often look at Marauders and L6s and Sonics guitars on eBay. And what those are for you, those who don't know, those are the budget line Gibson guitars from the late 70s, early 80s, New Orleans era. And the Sonics, for example, has a bolt-on neck, but came with the original Dirty Fingers pickups, which are super high output. They're kind of like an Invader. They were Gibson's version of the Invader. And they're just awesome guitars. They have a lot of mojo, but they were super cheap. Super, super cheap. Um, for example, the bolt-on neck, it looks weird on a Gibson, but um, they didn't they didn't do it right. I mean, the plate's kind of small, and um, you know, the hardware wasn't that great on them, and the, the Sonics has a pick guard and underneath the pick guard is just completely routed out for any pickup you can imagine. It's not even routed for pick, for humbuckers anymore. It's just one solid universal route. And you can pick them up still for, you know, six to 800 bucks. And I do want one. I saw a Silver Burst uh, Sonics the other day and I almost picked it up, but uh, I would like to stay married. So I did not get it, but it could have. And I often think about it. Maybe you should. So, someone buy a Sonics and report back and, and tell me how awesome it is. Jimmy Bauer from I Hate God plays one and uh, he seems to do okay with it. I don't know, I'll probably get one one of these days. You know me. This week, I suggest you find folks picking up the new Cloud Kicker EP. Now this EP is not what you would normally expect from Mr. Ben Sharp. It's more of a, I believe it's an odds and sods kind of uh, B-side comp compilation. And it's more of on the experimental side. It's definitely not the huge bombastic boom, doo -doo -doo, kind of stuff. It's not that at all. It's actually super, super melodic and kind of mellow. And I really, really enjoyed it. That's all I got for this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am Fluff and I'll see you next week. Gus, what are you doing? Why are my dogs in here? I hate it when I sit down and forget to close the door. All right, boy. How's it going? You have to leave now. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. I'm sorry. <laughs>